As a folklorist, I tend to see a lot of the material that goes into the My, My Little Pony series as being, as you'll see later on, uh, mythological in nature. A myth is a form of storytelling that has culturally evolved to help people deal with stresses in daily life. So to find bronies less likely to be neurotic, to me, is like discovering that uh, people who eat a healthy diet are less likely to have uh, vitamin deficiency diseases. In other words, bronies tend to get the intellectual material that they need to deal with life today. I used this last year for all, for all in the ballroom. Can't believe that my son who was so serious would go and look at that those sorts of magazines. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's normal for a 17-year-old. It is. But let's let's define normal our way, not the. Uh, uh, not the neurotic way. Ooh, what's a queer story? Okay. When I, one of the things that I discovered when I gave this presentation at, uh, at AFS is people immediately came up and said, you need to read a bunch of queer studies uh, theory. I said, what's queer studies theory? Well, basically, it started out dealing with, uh, with uh, sexual orientation, but the essential premise is that queer studies holds that social rules of how people behave are created and enforced by a dominant faction. It started out dealing with gender and sexual identity, but now it deals with all kinds of orthodoxies. Um, these are usually things that get internalized as common sense, meaning that those in control don't want you to question them. They are the way things are. And if you're a queer studies person, you call that hegemony. Hegemony doesn't mean wielding power and frightening people. It means getting people to think the way you want them to think so that you can control them more easily. And so, the most disturbing challenges to the status quo are concealed in plain sight in the kinds of culture that are supposedly uh, intended for children only and are by their essence supposed to be nonsensical. Okay. And adults who follow such stories are, this is another queer studies jargon term, transgressive. Transgressive, that is, from the culturally dominant point of view. That is, you're choosing to refuse to obey common sense. Nice quote from Judith Halberstam, one of the, uh, the main gurus of, uh, of queer studies. Difficult topics are raised and contained in children's films and TV series, incidentally, and manga, and comic books, uh, so precisely so that they do not have to be discussed elsewhere, and also so that the politics of rebellion can be cast as immature, pre edible childish, foolish, fantastical, and rooted in a commitment to failure. Now this is interesting. Anybody remember what happens in the My Little Pony episode that deals with uh, winter wrap-up? Uh, Twilight, yes. Ah, oh, well, ah, I thought was you were asking a question to the crowd or something. How do you say it? Well, you, who fails? In, uh, in the, the winter wrap up, in almost every conceivable way. Uh, yeah, but the whole part of it, 
deals with Twilight Sparkle, who is the newcomer, who wants to help out with Winter Wrap Up. And she goes around from team to team saying, can I do something? Can I help you? And she's given something to do, and she makes a ridiculous mess of it, time after time. And she gets to the end, and she is humiliated. And then, all of a sudden, something very interesting happens in the episode. You realize that the adult who is in charge of the effort is clueless about how to organize that, and that the people who are supposedly experienced in doing the job are also failing. The person who is supposed to fly south to bring the birds back north for spring flies north instead. Um, the ice skaters who are supposed to divide up the lake ice into small ice cubes put the lines too far apart and they make icebergs instead. And all of a sudden the person who has failed at every task realizes that she's the only one there that actually knows what to do in a case like that. And she becomes the manager. And this, of course, is a standard line in, uh, in academic world. Those who can, do. Those who can't, teach. And those who can't teach, go into administration. <laughs> so it is an incredibly cynical episode because it points out that a commitment to failure oftentimes is the short route to turning over the event in such a way that it brings the lowest to the top and it takes the, the person who is supposedly in charge at the top and down, it takes her down to the bottom. So failing enough will help you reach the top. Failing enough will help you reach the top. Yes, exactly. <laughs> failing your way to the top. <laughs> and that is one of the key elements of queer studies that you don't stop uh, trying to do what you know is right, even though it is defined over and over again by majority society as failure. That shows there's little girls. You look gay watching it. People will really think you're creepy. There's something wrong with you. truth as you see it, but I don't care. That, I think, is a, an essential uh, queer studies kind of, uh, of motto. You're all telling the truth, common sense truth, but I don't care. Now, I, I talked about mythology. A myth is a kind of culturally evolved way of storytelling that does two things at once. First of all, it talks about something that takes place in a world different from ours. And at the same time, it talks about the world that you and I inhabit. And so a myth is unreal and real. It presents a fantasy, but in the fantasy, you have things that happen that are part of everyday life. And by putting these things in an alternative frame of reality, it allows people to think about issues in a lucid way that's unrestrained by the prevailing oh. social rules. Okay. If you read the Bible rather than just waving it, you'll find there are incredibly, incredibly subversive things said in that. Fairy tales, likewise. Uh, fantasy novels. Video games, role-playing games, comic books, manga, anime, people are constantly finding new ways to express this form of storytelling because as I, uh, as I believe, it is therapeutic. It helps people deal with social stresses. And it's interesting how many kind of memes actually blur these genres. This one takes a, uh, an old video game and, uh, and puts the uh, characters from My Little Pony in it. I've seen Game of Ponies. I've seen Star Trek uh, parodies. Uh, I've seen uh, 
twilight, not twilight sparkle, but twilight about the vampires that sparkle in the daylight, uh, posters that blend it to. These are all signaling an equivalence of genre. These are all ways of telling contemporary myths.